Jason with the Table Monkeys and today we are going to continue our discussion of the arm wrestling hill of techniques and start talking about uh, some of the moves that you can do by transitioning between these spots on the hill, right? Yeah, so what we're going to talk about today is like how to dance between inside and outside, make it unpredictable for your opponents to know what you're trying to do and make them hang on to you and play defense. Yeah, exactly. And uh, this move is spawning from uh, something that Evan Burgoyne taught us. He called it the douchebag. Mm -hmm. Now he might have just been douchebagging us and <laughs> fucking with us, but as far as we know, Jake Charles does it a lot and you'll notice it. A lot of other pullers doing a similar version of this or different variations of it. So that's why like Alex is saying that it's really just a dance between in and out. And once you understand it, depending on how you you pull you can kind of apply it in different ways right exactly before you do any transition you need to have control over a certain part of the hill so let's say for example of a can opener you need to have control of, of your opponent's pronator in a hook so before you commit to going outside and, and completing the roll if you're in a king's move you need complete control of the high game of your of your opponent's riser and their cup before you can come up and try and finish with the press. Yeah. So the douchebag is the same. Uh, similar to the can opener, you need control of your, per your opponent's pronator. You're gonna be in a hook. You've got it fully established, but the problem is he's too strong here and I can't continue driving to the side. Either elbow or bicep, there's just too much to drive through, but you've got a good position in the hook. Like you've, you know, Alex is on top. You can see he's got his wrist over mine and he's got access to my fingers, which is really what he's looking for. Exactly, so I, I still wanna finish with a hook, um, but I need to improve my positioning first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fake going outside, create, create some tension in his fingers so he has to hold on to me, create some space on the lower part of his hand, and then, then come back in inside, hopefully with a better position to get the pin. So this, this pressure that he's creating is very similar to that, uh, what we had said about working in the in the setup mm -hmm. and you're he's really using his frame and his and his uh like forearm pushing it up into my fingers right to so create that step by step i'm in the hook and i'm driving i'm driving i can't i can't get through so instead create some pressure in his fingers create some space he's now holding yeah. on to me here and then drive back in the into the hook and i've, I've gotten him outside of his shoulder he was not expecting me to come back into the hook and uh, now I've gained more position. I can, I can do the same thing and keep gaining more position or you know, I get the pin the first time and yeah. uh, I'm happy. Yeah. Okay, now we're just gonna show you a few ways that we've taken that move and kind of adapted it to other parts of the table or just to try to you know, expand upon it a little bit right. uh, in our own practices. So one of the things is not everybody wants to fight in a hook uh, and sometimes, you know, for a top roller, is there any way for a top roller to use this same kind of tactic uh, where he's going to use his ability to roll into your fingers to try to jab you outside of your shoulder a little bit uh, in order to get a better position for his top roll, not necessarily because he wants to come in and hook. Mm -hmm. So if uh, you think about, like, if Alex is trying to come in and carve, you see this position a lot where a top roller will get back here. Well because of the containment and because maybe I'm all the way at the back of my pad, I don't have a lot of ability to really roll through or his side pressure is too much that I get stuck out here and I'm way on my bicep. So what I might wanna do is, as I'm rolling like this, is then give a little jab inside like that. Again, hopefully he's not expecting it. Yep. He shouldn't be expecting it. And the point is that I'm not trying to get here. From there, I might try to roll out again hard and take more of his hand this way, right? So. It's just an example of how you can adapt that move to a different part of the, the table. Yeah, and it's all about incrementally gaining more and more position because uh, you hear this term a lot, hit for position, not for the pin. Yeah. And that's very applicable here. You want to get in prime position, the best position you can be before you go for the pin so it's as easy as possible. Yeah, and that hit for position, that doesn't mean just on the go. Yeah. Like that's applicable in all positions where you're trying to apply some sort of a hit, like Alex just said. So this is a perfect example of that. And a lot of the time, uh, be, once you're once the match is stopped and it becomes like a chess match like we say at that point it's it becomes kind of like throwing combos like if you're throwing a combo I throw a jab it's not really that I'm trying to hit the jab it's that I'm trying to set you up so that when I drop my back punch you're right in the perfect position to get 
fucking nailed by it. Yeah. Well, that's the same thing here. Like, like this outside version here, the the hit to the inside for the top roller, it's not to get a great position inside. It's so that he can get a better position when he goes to roll out, because the rollout is really the hit that he's looking for. Or uh, if you're on the inside, rolling into Alex's fingers isn't like I'm not trying to get a bunch of position here, but I want enough that when I drop my shoulder back in, I really get him outside of his shoulder. Yep. So again, th this is your jab, this is your back punch. Uh, and, and that's once you start learning these moves, you can start to learn how to use them that way. You yeah. know what I mean? Because arm wrestling is a martial art, and we all want to become the best martial arm wrestlers we can be. Yeah. So become a master of the table, become a master of the entire hill, so you can dance between every position whenever you need to. Yeah, and just become an unpredictable uh, puller for your opponents because, uh, yeah, versatility is definitely uh, an advantage, yeah. I think. Exactly. So, um, like the video if you like the video. Try uh, that douchebag out in practice. Let us know what you think. Feedback in the comments. Subscribe, share, hit that bell. And monkeys out. Peace.